life for as God led her into the ministry. She was a student here in ninth grade. She is now a senior in Seattle. In Seattle. So senior, some of you may recognize her. She started a ministry based on the Lord's work in her life. Will you please welcome Mariah Smiley. Hey guys. Yeah, I'm Mariah, like he said. Um, I was a freshman here at Sachs, and since then I've been to three different schools, so forgive me if I don't know every one of your names, you seniors, because there's been a lot of names since then. Or since then. Um, I want to talk to you guys today about Drops of Love, which is my charity that I founded when I was 14 years old, based on what the Lord called me to do in my life. Um, and I'm not up here because I would have thought this if I was sitting down there. I'm not up here to pad my ego or to kind of lift myself up because this actually makes me really uncomfortable. So um, I just wanted to let you guys know that this is just to kind of share with you guys that none of you guys are too young to do any of this because it really is possible. And sometimes people like it even more when a teenager is doing what God's called them to do. So like I said, I'm a senior now. Um, however, I'm not in high school. I'm taking college courses. So um, I actually don't get my senior year which is kind of fun. I'm a pastor to fifth and sixth grade kids, so if I start screaming and jumping all around the stage, that's why. And um, I grew up at Christian schools until last year when I left and I went to public, and that was a big change. Um, it was a great chance for ministry, though. So I am going to talk about Drops of Love, like I said, and it's basically founded on the thought that one dollar gives life to one person for one year, and it's also based on one child dying every 15 seconds from lack of clean water. And that's a horribly astounding fact. And it really freaked me out when I saw So I have a minute long video just to show you guys so that you can kind of put a face to those children that are dying. And I'll come up here and I'll talk to you guys. I'll start my own charity. 
And so I kind of, um, that night, I found a Drops of Love. I coded my own website. I'm not very good at coding, but I coded it. And I made some videos, and I sent out some emails, and lo and behold, Living Water contacted me. And so by showing that I had a passion, they followed what I dreamed of doing. They actually allowed me to become my own branch off of Living Water. They gave me every resource that I needed, and they gave me a mentor, and kind of said, go. And in exchange, I gave them my profits, and they went down and they drilled the wells. And then I decided that I wanted to do more. And so I became a 501c3, which in case you guys don't know what that means, that means an official nonprofit company. So Drops of Love is now a company. Um, what I do when I'm a company, I have a board of directors. I am the founder and president too, which is kind of weird to put on your college applications. And um, we meet and we talk about Drops of Love and how we're going to help people next. Um, as the president, I have to coordinate fundraisers and I have to contact companies and go meet with companies and all that stuff. And even though I'm 17, God's given me a gift to be able to do that. Um, so I wanted to share with you guys about the well drill that I went on. I recently went on my own well drill. Normally I just send the money down. But I really wanted to put a face to all this work that God's been putting in my heart. So last November, I took a week off school and I went to my family to Villa Well in Guayapa, Bajo, El Salvador. So because I doubt that you guys want to hear me just talk on and on about this, I actually put a five minute video together. Actually, it's like three minutes and 40 seconds or something. But And it's about the well that they used to have. And then it goes to how we drilled the well, some kids that we helped, kind of like that video, and then um, it finishes with the kids seeing the clean water. But before I start that, I want to tell you a little bit. Um, they don't speak any English, and my Spanish is very bad, but um, one of my favorite times there that made everything worth it is I was looking at one of the kids, and they looked at me, and they're like, agua? Like, what is this? And I was like, yeah, no más small agua. And they're like, oh! Um, and that was awesome to see that they really understood that this was their life. And so I'll show you this and um, I'll finish up and talk a little
But um, that was that was the trip in November, and um, that that made it all real, and that made me realize what God has put in my heart. Um, one more thing that makes it even more clear: um, I was recently in Israel, and we went to the top of the mountain or the hill, really, where the Sermon on the Mount was preached. And when we were on the top, each youth was supposed to find one Bible verse that really um, spoke to them. And we read them from where scholars believe Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and I chose, I didn't know a verse to choose, so I do this thing sometimes where I take my Bible and I go, God, show me what you want to show me, and I throw up my Bible and whatever page it lands on, I read that page. And I opened it up to Habakkuk 1.5, and it says, for I am going to do things, oh, sorry. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. To me, that requires faith, and to me, that was such a reassuring verse. That is now the verse I read for Drops of Love all the time. So I'm almost out of time, but I wanted to call up a freshman girl to kind of show you guys something. Can I have a freshman girl, please? I promise I won't be mean to you, please. Okay, yeah, come on up. Ooh. Hello, come on up here. All right, so what's your name? Brooke. Her name's Brooke, everyone. Do you lift weights every single day? What's the farthest you can run or walk? <laughs> Do you know? A couple miles, maybe? You know, probably. Okay, so she can probably walk a couple miles without feeling tired, right? You can just walk. Okay, so people without clean water, they walk up to 10 miles a day. 14, how old are you? 14. 14 year old girls, they walk up to 10 miles a day. But they carry this jerry can, so can you pick that up for me, please? Could you walk with that for 10 miles? Maybe, but they don't carry it like that. They carry it on their heads, yeah. You don't have to lift it, though, because you have a white shirt on, and I don't know if it'll leak. But, um, so, do you think you could carry that for 10 miles? You stop every once in a while? Can I have a senior... <laughs> All right. Hi, what's your name? Nice to meet you. Will you lift that, please? Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of heavy, huh? Will you walk with that for 10 miles on your head? No. No. <laughs> yeah. That's 40 pounds, by the way. So 40 pounds in your head would not be fun. So thank you. Um, <laughs> now that you guys kind of have a taste for um, what it's like, I want to give you guys a way that you can help. But I'm kind of running out of time, so I'll kind of speed up how I talk a little bit. One really simple offering, but that's kind of easy. And I know you guys want something smarter. So next, you can do a water challenge. And I've done this here once before when I was a freshman. Basically what you do is you give up every beverage but water for a week and the money that you've saved, you donate. Um, I wanna make this a little easier for you guys to understand because I know that I think my money doesn't matter. If, every, if one person gave $20, which is about like a couple Starbucks, right? It's water for a family of four for five years. If each one of you gave $20, and I'm guessing there's like 400 in here, maybe about 400. That's a whole well in Haiti or Africa, which are one of the most expensive wells. So, and then the third one, I just wanna say really fast, cause that's your bell. Um, if you guys wanna come back and talk to me, this one's called Water Ambassadorship. And basically I join with you and help you guys fundraise and help you guys with what I learned and the connections that I've made so that you guys don't have to struggle with the hard parts. So with that, I am done. Um, and I will be in the back with the water challenge forms and to talk to you if you guys have questions.
I think each of us could probably recognize a passage in Scripture where it talks about a person who's in need of a drink, not just saying to them, go get a drink, or they're unclothed and say, well, go get clothes. It really challenges us to recognize the needs of others and to put ourselves in a place where God can use us to meet that need. As we close, uh, I have one announcement after I pray, but I want to pray for your ministry and for you. So if you'll bow your heads and just join me while I pray. Father, I just pray for Mariah, for her ministry, Drops of Love. We do ask that, uh, is that, okay. uh, I want to be sure I'm praying for the right ministry. Uh, we just pray for your blessing on her. We are encouraged and challenged to see that she uh, took your call and your prompting in her life to uh, put herself in a path that made a difference. So bless her, bless her ministry. We do thank you for this time and ask that you would be with her. In Jesus' name, amen. So she's gonna, and I got one announcement before you guys move around.